for those of us in the northern hemisphere, wintertime is rapidly approaching. And for my friends in the great white north, well, it's already here. For those of you in the southern hemisphere, why, it's springtime. And you guys don't really count right now. Shame on you. But we're going to talk about how to get your spider and riker ready for the colder season, especially if you're going to put it in hibernation for the winter. And to, that way you can ensure that come springtime, it's ready to ride with, with uh, minimal uh, issues over the long winter slumber. At the end of this video, we're going to do something a little different. We get inundated with requests for video collaborations, product placements, for everything you could possibly imagine. And we are really, uh, we're flattered and we find some of those products very helpful and we've actually promoted some of those on our channel. Some of those just weren't quite a good fit so we've decided not to uh, uh, bring those products on, onto our channel. And some of them, clearly they've never watched our video channel even though they say they have. So we're going to do a parody of those folks, uh, clearly uh, products that we're not really interested in. Now, these are not the real company names. These are totally fabricated uh, companies and product lines. However, the, the actual product itself is something that they've actually asked us to promote. It's not a real product placement, YouTube, so it's not an endorsement. It's just satire. for many of us, we have to put our Can-Am Spider and Rikers in the garage or park them someplace for the winter time because simply riding is not as pleasurable and sometimes it's just downright unsafe or impossible. Fortunately, in our region, we might average maybe one and a half days a year where we have snow on the roads, but it doesn't mean it's not wet and cold and we don't want to ride as much. So today we're going to talk about how to prepare your Spider and Riker uh, for the upcoming cold weather. Now, this is a basic overview of what I do. This is not telling you what you need to do. Uh, consult your owner's manual and operating instructions for how to handle your specific piece of equipment. We may not get much snow, but in the wintertime, our average daily temps can range between 35 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, get a lot of rain, a lot of dampness, a lot of wind, but we don't get that much snow. And often in the month of February, we will get several days with temperatures in the 70s, which is a nice break. And we try to take the spider out and just take it out for a nice ride when the weather warms up a little bit. Of course, then it follows up with temperatures in the 30s and perhaps snow. So here are some of the things you may want to take into consideration when you put your cannabis spider or Riker into hibernation for the winter time. Item number one is your gas tank. Uh, according to the American Petroleum Institute, modern gasoline is stable for three to five months without any potential problems of the gasoline breaking down. Longer than that, the gas will start to degrade. So if you're in one of the parts of the world that gets longer winters with no riding, you may want to consider a fuel stabilizer additive to your fuel tank. The next concern is water contamination in your gas tank. Typically, that will get there through condensation from the, the humid air on the outside getting into the tank that's not full. And then when the temperature cools, the, the tank uh, built, gets condensation and the water runs down into the gasoline. And that means your system will have problems starting come springtime. Water doesn't burn very well, so it's always a good idea to minimize the chances of getting water in your gas tank. In fact, the water contamination is such a concern, as a young pilot, on lesson number one, I learned that the first thing you do as you're getting your aircraft ready for flight is to check the gas tanks for water contamination. It's not uncommon to find a little bit of sediment or condensation in the bottom of the tanks, and we would drain it out. We don't have those options on our Canem Spiders or Rikers, so the best thing to do is to make sure that the air is displaced with fuel to minimize the possibility of condensation contamination. 
This is a lesson I learned very early in life. In the springtime, after finishing up school, my parents would send me to the mountains to hang out with my grandparents and my relatives. My uncle had a dirt bike uh, that he would keep under a tarp uh, on the side of the house. And I was allowed to take it out and ride the dirt bike. It's where I first got my first taste of the love of riding. But the problem was, every time I would try to start it, it would not start. I would fight with it and fuss with it and crank it and crank it and crank it. And this was pre-electric starter days, folks. I actually had to kickstart this thing. And many times, it simply would not start. The problem was, had I known then, simply water contamination in the gas. Had I actually learned how to drain the sump a little bit by disconnecting the fuel hose and draining the carburetor, it would have been fine. The next concern is the battery on your Can-Am Spider or your Riker. Most lead-acid batteries lose about 5% of their charge per month that it sets dormant. Plus, the cold weather causes the chemical reaction, which makes the battery work, slow down. So if you were to pull it out in cold weather and try to start it, you will find it may not want to start or may be very hesitant in starting. A battery setting and allowed to totally discharge may actually damage the battery, and you may not even be able to bring it back with a good battery charger. Or even then, it may shorten the overall lifespan. So what is the solution? Well, if your Spider or Riker is stored in a cold environment, take the battery out and place it someplace warmer and or place it on a battery tender. The battery tender is designed to uh, evaluate the charge status of the battery and keep the battery at a nice level of charge automatically without any human interference. One of the things you should not do is use your old style battery charger to use as a trickle charger to keep your battery maintained. This can cause overcharging and could actually damage the battery. So it's recommended you get a battery tender appropriate for the size battery that you have on your Spider or your Riker. In another word about the battery, always ensure that it's connected properly to your charging device or tender device. If you hook it up backwards, as a friend of mine used to say, it will cause your horn to suck and your headlight to cast shadows. Next item is your engine coolant. Now, I always like to check mine a couple times a year at the very least or during trips on longer trips to make sure the coolant level, number one, is adequate and that the quality of the, and the condition of the coolant is adequate. This can be done by acquiring a simple testing tool available at most hardware stores or auto supply stores, and you can test the quality of the, of the coolant. Also, review your Spider and Riker recommendations for change outs. The coolant on our spider is coming due and I expect to get that done in my spring maintenance cycle. On our spider, we simply remove the reservoir cap, then take a small flashlight and touch it to the bottle which illuminates the inside and you can clearly see our coolant level is perfect for a cold reading. Then insert your sampler and read the results. Clearly, we are due for a coolant change out, as the protection level is only about 5 degrees above zero, which is a lot colder than it will ever get inside of our garage, or probably even outside. So when you use your testing tool to check the quality of the, and the condition of your coolant, make sure that the amount of coolant is suitable for the environment your, your Riker or Spider is going to be stored in. Next item is your tires. Tires typically don't require any special consideration. Now, unless you're storing them outside, uh, the rubber is high quality rubber, but all tires will degrade with bright sunlight, even in the winter time, because the ultraviolet rays will actually damage the material the tire is made of. So at the very least, if it's stored outside, make sure the tires are covered. Also get them off the dirt. Dirt holds moisture, dirt and sand and soil. So you don't want the actual rubber to be in contact with the dirt and the moisture because that could actually cause damage and shorten the life of your tires. The ideal, of course, is to have it inside in a nice paved garage or at least up on some sort of blocks, patio pavers, or concrete or asphalt or something to get it off of the ground. So in doing my research in preparation for this video, I ran across several sources that recommended that you lubricate your drive chain on your motorcycle before you place it in the storage each year. Sounds like a good idea, but 
doesn't apply to us, folks. We have dry belts on our spiders and rikers. The next item of concern is condensation in the crankcase. Now, there's not a whole lot you can actually do about that because you can't overfill the oil supply. There's no way to drain the water out of the crankcase. So what do you do? You actually boil it off. How do you do that? You actually run the machine. You run it at operating temperature for at least 20 to 30 minutes to make sure that all the condensation in the crankcase is boiled off. The last thing you're going to do is what is referred to as a short run. You don't want to just crank it and let it set in the driveway for a little bit of a period of time. Even if it does come up to operating temperature, it doesn't lubricate all the internal components. So if you're going to take it out for a ride in the wintertime, take it for a longer ride to get the engine temperature up and keep it up for a while. Well, that's going to be about it for the winterization of your Can-Am Spider and Riker. I hope this was informative. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I do hope that you get a chance to enjoy your, uh, your machine, your Riker, your Spider before the weather gets too terribly cold. And for those of you on the other side of the planet in the Southern Hemisphere, none of this really applies to you for at least for another six months. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. And now a word from our sponsor. John, are you even watching this TV show? No, I'm distracted. What is that alluring scent you are wearing? Oh, light of the iguana. Do you like it? I find it irresistible. Oh. Night of the iguana. The scent only available through Imford products. Resistance will be futile. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more of our trouble-related content, just check out the rest of our channel. And don't forget to subscribe.